working on the boat again. That's right, guys. I am back working on the shed ship after a little bit of a hiatus there. I apologize for that. There was several factors that led into that. But mainly, I got builder's block, which is, I guess, like writer's block, where I reach a point in a project where I'm not quite sure what to do with the next step or how to proceed, and I just try and avoid it for whatever reason. And so I was doing that, and I got over it and just had to hammer down and start going back at it, which is what I did. And let's take a look at what I did since we last spoke. Since I've been letting the boat sit for so long, it has been collecting water and leaves. It's now under a bunch of trees and such. I haven't had a tarp over it. It's all fiberglass, so there's really not much in there that's going to uh, rot or anything like that. But it's been getting really dirty. So I set about cleaning everything up from uh, in between the stringers and uh, inside of the hole. Got all the water out of there, the sitting water, all the leaves and debris out so that we can start moving forward. So the first item of business as far as continuing the project was to build the floor. First step of the floor was to get my measurements. So going in six inch increments from the back of the boat and moving forward, I took measurements of the width of the inside of the boat, how wide my floor needs to be. I took all of these measurements and I put them into SketchUp. SketchUp is a program once created by Google, now owned by Trimble, that allows you to do 3D imaging and software and other stuff like that. Um, in this case, I just used it to build a 2D floor and built it into SketchUp so that I can see how much plywood I'm going to need. I was hoping to keep all of this into two sheets of plywood. So I drew up my floor in SketchUp and laid it out, ultimately getting it into the two sheets of plywood as you see here. Once the SketchUp drawing was done and I knew what I was working with and what sizes to cut my preliminary pieces of plywood, I set about marking off all of those 6 inch increment measurements and tapering in the outside edge and cutting all of those pieces off so I had some rough pieces. Next I put those rough pieces into the boat and did a little bit of test fitting just to make sure I was on the right track. We're doing it? Yeah, we're it's coming along. Well, we just need to paint it, and I guess. And then it'll be good to go, right? Yeah, well, we need to, um, we need to put in, like, the motor and, like, the steering wheel and, like, all the geek or, like, all the stuff that makes it run. Because those parts are important, right? Well, they are to make the boat go. I agree with you. Yeah, and to make the boat turn and everything. We need those things. I still needed to cut out the hole where the engine sits and uh, trim up some other edges. So eventually I cut out that center piece as well to make the back piece of the boat a U shape and therefore allow for the engine and so that I can set it nice and flush onto the stringers. So once I trimmed everything and got everything just how I wanted it to, and wanted it to sit flat in certain areas and walk up in certain areas. It was just like I wanted. It was time to fiberglass this wood. Now, this isn't marine grade plywood. I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. However, marine grade plywood is simply a regular plywood with a lower amount of voids that is encased in resin. Voids create an atmosphere where air pockets can form and can ultimately lead to weak spots or deterioration. However, I did just buy regular 3 inch plywood 
and I coated all of the sheets with resin. To do that, I started by sanding down all of the panels with 60, 120, 220, just to buzz down and get a nice smooth, flat surface that I could apply the resin to. Next, I got some six inch paint rollers and some resin and went about applying very light coats of resin uh, waiting for them to just barely tack up and once they tacked up I would come back over it with the next light coat of resin. As the resin was starting to harden up on each batch I would come around and hit all of the edges of the plywood as well to make sure that I have no exposed plywood edges or surface anywhere. This does coat the entire piece of wood and hopefully soak into it with resin therefore making it waterproof to a degree uh, nothing's ever going to be 100% waterproof, but should hopefully get this a little bit closer to marine grade plywood uh, than it was obviously before. Before I could lay the floor into the boat, I had to finish up some work back in the transom. The floor is going to be covering up some access to some areas in the rear that I had not yet strengthened. Here's just a quick shot showing these areas that I strengthened in the back of the boat. Not a lot to look at here. I was mainly reinforcing and building up on stuff that I had already built from the outside to make it strong enough and seaworthy. Next step was to install the floor as a dry fit. So here I laid everything out. Uh, I did end up trimming a couple areas where the fiberglass had made it just a touch too thick, ground those down, re-glassed them, and put it back in so I had a nice smooth fit. And then I took a countersink and drilled all of the holes for the screws that would hold the floor to the stringers. I used a countersink so that I can get the top of the screw head below the surface of the plywood so that I can then put a resin cap over that screw hopefully uh, reducing the possibility of water getting into our floor in the future and helping to hold it down to the stringers as well. After the dry fit, the next step is to actually lay down the floor. Now this is a commitment point. After I do this, there is no pulling that floor up easily anymore. So you need to be pretty confident in everything's fitment and where it's going, your steps, your supplies and materials that are available so that all of this can get done quickly um, and before things start to set up. So the first step was to lay construction adhesive down on top of all the stringers. Not only does this help bond the wood, it's also going to create a little bit of a vibration dampener and some noise dampening from squeaking and, and such like that. Um, so I put down the construction adhesive I cut the tip of the construction adhesive in a manner that allows for the adhesive to build up and create a little ridge as opposed to just a small semicircle on the surface of the stringer. That way when you put the wood down on top of it, ideally it smashes that little ribbon out and creates a little bit wider bond and ensures contact from top to bottom even if there is a small gap there. After I laid down the adhesive, I set the floor down on top of it. Keep in mind, I already had all of these screw holes countersunk and drilled, so I knew where everything was going and how I was gonna line up. Before I laid each screw in, I took some resin that I had just mixed up and using a paintbrush, I dropped the dab of resin into each one of the screw holes before putting the screw into the hole. Ideally, this is sealing up any of that fresh wood that I exposed by drilling that hole. I put all the screws in and then I came back over the top of all of these holes with another dab of resin filling the countersink hole in, that way sealing it back with the surface of the floor and making it all a unified resin piece again, again trying to prevent any water intrusion into our floor. I still have a couple more steps to go on the floor even though everything is secured down. I still need to go over the joints between each floor panel. I'm going to shallow V-groove those joints out and lay another 
uh, section of mat and resin down there to bond the floor panels together, increase the strength overall, and again, make sure that we don't have any point for water to get in. That pretty much sums up everything I've got done on the floor so far. I still need to run the adhesive along the edges and fill in some gaps in the engine bay and in such. But for the most part, it is solid. It feels great. It feels great underneath my feet. I'm not hearing any squeaking or anything like that. And I'm hoping it's going to stay waterproof for a long time. Now, the next big development with the boat. So, as you guys know, in the last video, I did a DIY hot tank uh, engine clean. Well, the problem is, and this is where some of that builder's block comes back in that I was talking about earlier, I'm not exactly proficient on two-stroke rebuilds. This is going to be a learning curve for me. And because that process intimidated me, I got to admit, I put it off. And what did I do? I ended up putting it off for too long and letting all of those nicely cleaned engine components sit in that trash can for too long. And I'm ashamed to admit, but it looks like this. So that engine's pretty much toast. It wasn't great to start with. So I set about finding a good deal on another engine. And I happened to come across this listing for a 787 that has been painted silver. Now I know that there is an engine rebuilder out of Florida that uses silver when they repaint their blocks as far as I know. So I was hoping that this could possibly be one of their rebuilt blocks. The seller was unsure. He's got a lot of power sports equipment. Didn't know if this one was one or not. However, I was able to get this whole engine for 300 bucks plus a partial trade and it's in a hell of a lot better condition than the one I had before. This one's still completely assembled, has good compression, and is ready to rock. So I'm going to pretty much drop this one in and hook everything back up and get this thing back on the water. So now I have a floor, I have an engine inside of it that's put back together and not just completely torn apart, and we're ready to start building it. So that's the latest on the shed ship. I know it's been a while since the last update, but I have kind of got my spark uh, reignited in this project again now that I have the engine, the floor in there, and I'm kind of over the step that was uh, holding me up, which was the rebuild of the engine. I wish I could have gotten some good content out of that rebuild, but I want to go drive this boat. So be sure to like and subscribe, keep up with some more regular updates as I move forward here. We're going to be putting stuff back together, and that's all just bits and pieces. Shouldn't be too long now, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.